internet is Laura and this is Kyle. It's another episode of He Said, She Said. Laura, how are you? I am terrific. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So you, uh, you've been creating some buzz today concerning our topic. And yep. it, it, it came off of an article that I wrote yesterday, uh, kind of laying out my thoughts concerning the whole Ray Rice, Janae Rice, you know, debacle in the, in the elevator. So the title of that article was Ray, w Ray Rice, Fifty Shades, and the, cons the Morality of Consent. All right. Okay. And so I attempted to lay out in, in that article, you know, much of the, of the buzz going around about the horrific incident that happened in Atlantic City back in February, you know, centers around purely Ray Rice himself. You know, he, you know, obviously they were arguing, uh, you know, Video before the actual incident in the elevator shows that you know they have both appeared to be getting somewhat violent. You know she appeared to be getting a, a little bit to the edge of violence as well outside of the building, and you know it obviously came to a head. You know he hits her in the face, she falls, apparently hits her head on one of the banisters in the actual elevator, knocks her out cold. The next thing you know, he's dragging her like a lifeless body outside the elevator. Just a horrific, you know, yeah. I, it was surreal to actually watch that. Yeah. So much of the commentary around that has centered solely on the fact that Ray Rice hit her. Um, you know, m many of the critics have 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 also asked, well. Why does she stay? Because Janae Rice married the man 30 days later, okay? And a, a lot of the pundits have gone as far as to say, well, you shouldn't even be asking why Janae Rice married him. You shouldn't be asking what her motives were. The issue really centers around he hit her. That's all there is to it. There should be no discussion around anything else. It's only a matter of you need to focus on him and leave her out of it. I don't believe that. You know, I, I posted quite a few things about this this um, incident. As you know, oh, I, I worked, um, I did work in a domestic violence agency, and as part of my um, employment there, I was required to take the Connecticut certification on, on domestic violence. And so I learned a great deal, things that, you know, I, I, I maybe thought I knew because the issues around domestic violence, the psychology around domestic violence and, those, and relationships in which that occurs, um, it's sometimes counterintuitive and it's also really complex. And I, I think there are two things to look at. I happen to be from the camp, and, and you know I have two boys, 17 and 20, and um, I happen to be from the camp of there is never going to be an excuse or a reason to raise a hand, anyone, but especially men in, in relationships, but anyone, I would say that to anyone, any woman that would raise her hand and hit any anyone as well. I, I just I don't find that there's ever an excuse for that as a as a reaction or a you know or a solution to anything. However, the psychology behind the why why one stays is really complicated. And I think I read your article and I know you, and it's a really great your post is really great and raises a lot of great questions. Um, but but here's how I look at it, and here's kind of how I look at it based on what I learned. Um, she's, you know, facing cameras now, right? She she faced cameras after the the video was released, and all of this came to like major public scrutiny. She's sitting next to a a man who is what three times the size of her, and. The thing you learn about, let's call it hitting or abuse or domestic violence, whatever you want to say in a relationship, is that is clearly not the first time that that has happened, nor will it be the last time that that happens. Domestic violence, that is not a one-time occurrence. It's a cycle. 
and it has a lot of components to that cycle. So here she is in the public arena, sitting next to a man, being interviewed next to a man who is three times her size, who she has to go home with that night, who she's the only one who knows what the backlash of, of this really is because while we know what happened in the elevator because of the video, we probably have no idea what goes on behind closed doors and it's probably way worse than we know about. So the incident actually took place in February. It didn't actually come to light until the end of August, the beginning of September, okay? The first thing that she did, Laura, the very first thing when it was announced that he had been released from the NFL along with his $4 million a year salary was what did she do? She took to Instagram and lit everybody up that tried to support her. Correct. All right? So I think it's a little dishonest to assume that for people to think that, well, she was put in front of cameras. She chose to do that the moment she, she made it public, the moment that she took to Instagram and lit everyone up. Okay, she did that. They could have done this different in many ways. Okay, you know, people say, yeah. well, the video was a, you know, it was a breach of their privacy. It was done in an elevator <laughs> in a hotel. There was no claim of privacy there. Okay, he just happened to hit her when no one was looking, or so he thought. Okay, so there are a number of things happening. One is public humiliation for him. And when any human being, anyone, is publicly humiliated, they lash out. And the person he's going to lash out at is her. Um, whether we know it or not, she, I'm sure, faced an enormous amount of fear around it. Now, I'm not defending her. I don't know her. I'm talking more about the, the psychology behind victims and, and, and kind of using her as a jumping off point for the conversation around that psychology, which is she needs to let him know that she's not going to go down the road of I'm a victim because it protects her safety. It, 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 it does in, in so many ways. Uh, okay, fair enough. All right, but let me say this. We don't live in Pakistan. This isn't Syria. We're not under Shira law where her doing something like that not only brings retribution from him but from everyone else in the community we don't we don't live in that environment okay i didn't say this in the article and i wanted to say this she had the opportunity laura to bring a focus to domestic violence that no shelter could have ever done she had the opportunity to support her man okay as well as fight and give strength and give hope to countless other domestic violence victims at the same time. And instead what she did, she shot everyone else down. She gave hope to the abuser and darkened the hope of the abused. And when you learn about the victim mentality, you realize that it usually takes 10 times for a victim of domestic violence Seven, ten attempts before they actually leave a relationship. And it's not about just leaving. It's about a safety plan first, a plan for leaving. And I think, and I could be wrong, and, and, and so, you know, there's, there's a piece of me that listens to you and is like, you know, you're spot on. She could absolutely have, have heightened the awareness. If, in fact, she's 100% safe, in doing that. I don't know if she is or she isn't. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about, I do know that he cold copped her in an elevator and that she sure. was knocked unconscious. So I have no idea um, what what might go on. I have no idea if he, you know, pinches her under the table and, you know, and whispers, I'm going to fucking kill you if you say a word about this. I don't know. Yeah. And I think it's so hard for us who want to look at her and want her so much to to take a leadership position in this and and to be that person that can that can um, empower other women and to to take 
an opportunity to show them how one can do it. And I'm just not sure she she's there yet. The article really spelled out, you know, my brush with violence, shall we say. All right. Yeah. So, you know, long story short is I had just recently gotten divorced. I was starting a new relationship with a woman that, you know, came after the divorce. Um, and to summarize, you know, she did not have the most refined upbringing. So, you know, I had the fortunate opportunity to be able to introduce her to things that maybe she had not seen before. She became a, a, a she, she became a lover of the vine. We'll put it that way. Um, furthermore, you know, I had the opportunity to take her out to Napa Valley, you know, and, and I, I said that was like adding fuel to a smoldering ember. Okay. So now she, you know, she, she looked upon, you know, Opus One and Stag's Leaf, you know, as long lost friends that, you know, suddenly she had pictures to show everyone, look who I know. And we were at a party and we were talking among friends and literally out of nowhere, I mean, in a soap opera like fashion, she cold cock, open hands, smacks me in the face in front of 20 people. Uh, the place went silent. I was shocked. I don't know why it was. I've never really, even to this day, I have no clue what it was that I said or did that prompted her to do that. But to my mind, Laura, at that point, she had crossed the line. All right. You know, there was issues before that where, you know, I, I said that, you know, she liked many different varieties of reds and whites. None of them really seemed to like her. Um, she, she got very temp, short tempered when she was drinking. Um, and, and this was the apex of that. That was a point for me that I had to make a decision. Okay. Yes, I could have forgiven her and moved on. Would it have happened again? I don't know. But I said in the article, I was raised never to hit women. I was also raised never to hit, be hit by them. <laughs> and I was done with that. All right. I don't regret not giving her another chance. You know, and I ended the article that I hope Janae Rice doesn't regret that she did. Where I find, why I found the, you know, titled the art, why I titled the article Ray Rice in Fifty Shades is I, I reference back to the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. By every conceivable definition, Christian Grey is an abuser. He humiliates Anastasia Steele. He abuses her. He stalks her. He verbally abuses her throughout the three novels. And I said, why is it that these books have garnered such worldwide attention and a movie deal when they seem to glorify the exact thing that now has been condemned? And I said, well, I think it goes down to three things. One, is it because the abuse was taken under the context of a sexual relationship? Did it heighten the eroticism? And I asked the question, is violence only tolerable if it's in the bedroom and includes a gag ball and whips and chains? I said, or more likely, was the violence weaved into the narrative because Anastasia Steele consented to it? And that's where I wave into the morality of consent. If you take a look at the way we define morality today as a culture, specifically our sexual morality, it's based on consent. I can do whatever I want to do to whomever I want to do it so long as that person agrees to it. That has been the basis of the argument for, for same-sex marriage. It's been the basis of the argument for euthanasia. You know, It's been the basis of the argument for the sexual revolution. If two consenting adults want to do it, why do I care? Fine, but that knife cuts both ways. We have to admit that yes, no doubt that Janae Rice laying cold out on the floor of the elevator did not consent to being hit by him. But we have to admit, Laura, that since that point, she is consenting to be there. She's consenting when she took to Instagram to support her man in the way that she did. She consents every moment that she stays with him. So how then can I take the question in this case of domestic abuse 
seriously, because that was a question that was posed in a news program that I was writing that prompted this. How can I really take it seriously when the abused doesn't seem to want to? What am I supposed to do with that as an individual? Some people have called, we need to go ahead and put Ray Rice under the jail no matter what Janae does. Really? Is that way that we are going to move forward as a society? Because if that's the case, I know a lot of people who go into the BDSM thing that probably should be put in jail as well. So we have to come to an agreement on how we're going to define our morality and the way that we do consent. What Ray Rice did was appallingly wrong. As a man, it's absolutely appalling. And he should be brought to justice in whatever way he can, so long as Janae Rice, the only victim, okay, chooses to go that route. But to make the argument that Janae should not be questioned about why she stays is categorically wrong and it's biased because here's the situation. For me to ask Janae and to question today, well, why do you stay? It doesn't abdicate Ray Rice's responsibility for what he did. It actually confirms it. If I'm asking Janae, why are you staying? I know that what he's doing is wrong. And then to believe this cockamamie idea that by asking her why she stays somehow makes her complicit in the abuse is ridiculous. It's a simple acknowledgement that she is in an environment from what we can see that's unhealthy, it's dysfunctional. Why do you choose to stay in that? It doesn't make her guilty for her being beat. It doesn't stay, well, she must deserve it if she stays around. That's ridiculous. But it has to be asked. Yes. So they're two separate things. His behavior and her behavior are two Absolutely. Se separate Absolutely. things. And I think that's part of it, what's at the core of, of the problem with this debate and this conversation is that there are those who argue that why she stayed is does justify in some way or another his actions yeah, that's that, not that true. consensual. Yeah, that's wrong. If, that, if people believe that, that's wrong. It, it, it's about the it, it goes down to the consensual piece that you're talking about, which you know again. Um, and first of all, like I don't know what the laws are in in Connecticut. Um, and there may be legal experts out there, but my understanding, what I learned, what I, what I, what I know, what I think I know, is that um, first of all, domestic violence is illegal. So as it should be. So there you go with that. We don't have to argue the debate or was it wrong, was it not wrong. If it's illegal, it's illegal. The law, you know, someone posted on my site yesterday. You know, uh, you know, do you not believe in due process? I believe in due process, but I'm, I, I fail to see if it's illegal and there's a video of him cold cocking her, I, I, I don't That's all the due process that I need. That's, that, you know, I, there's nothing left to say. Why she stayed is a far more complicated question and answer, and it does involve, and I think you're, I, I do think you're right on, that there is the question of consent and what does that mean? And what does it mean? It is sex, you know, when it does tie in sexuality and relationship and all of those things. And honestly, as I listen to you, you know, I don't know what the answer is, but I do think that there are important questions to ask. Um, and I think that the that when you do have Fifty Shades uh, trilogy like that, when you do have something that makes such a statement and 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 does become so popular. Um, we, we do have to ask the questions, where does, you know, where does consent begin and end? Where, you know, and how do you determine that? And, 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 and for women especially, because we know the statistics, uh, I mean, I, I have to say to you, I, I, when I read your, your post and you shared your story so openly, I was completely, you know, taken aback. Um, I wouldn't have even thought you would have stayed past that evening with her. <laughs> I, I thought you would have just left and like said goodbye and never talked to her again, frankly. Because, um, again, there's no excuse in my book for anyone to hit someone ever. Laura, final thoughts. I'll say this, and I didn't say it during the course of this video. I, I'm the mother of a college athlete, and I do expect more from our athletic governing bodies 
um, as well as part of this conversation. Um, but I guess I think that this, my final thought is that this is a conversation that has to be had and it has to be had in an open and respectful manner. I wrote the article because I saw a shift where n no one wanted to, 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 to question Janae Rice and really what I consider the indifference for her own personal safety. You're absolutely right. This isn't the first time it's happened. It's not going to be the last time, but she chooses to stay. And to simply excuse that with the statement, well, that's just because domestic violence is complicated. I think that's a biased response to a much bigger problem. At the end of the day, we alone are ultimately responsible for our own safety. We all know that, right? She has an obligation to protect herself. And if she chooses to stay in that relationship, it does not warrant the next time he will abuse her. And let's be frank, he will, okay? At some point, that does not justify him doing so. Right. However, I, I, I don't want it to be a situation later on where something tragic happens and we're left wondering why she didn't leave because that'll ultimately be the question. You know, if you play this reel to the end and God forbid, you know, Laura, something happens and, you know, and, and she happens to, to, to suffer tragically, okay, people are going to begin to ask, why didn't she leave? And by then it'll be too late. Yeah. Very, very difficult topic to talk, very difficult topic to talk about. Laura, thanks a lot. Until next time, have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Shoot. Bye.